I hope you enjoy my stories. Instead of just clicking thumbs down, please comment and share how we can do better. If you do like our video then please like and subscribe. In the chronicles of American criminal lore, the mere mention of the Yuna bomber conjures a potent blend of fear and intrigue. This enigmatic individual shrouded in mystery perpetrated a chilling series of bombings that gripped the nation in a state of dread for close to 20 years. Each explosion unleashed by the Yuna bomber sent shockwaves through the fabric of society, leaving behind a landscape scarred by devastation and anxiety. The calculated nature of these attacks, meticulously planned and ruthlessly executed, elevated the Yuna bomber to an almost mythical status within the annals of criminal history. With each blast, the nation found itself held captive by the looming specter of an unseen assailant, fueling a relentless pursuit for justice and an unyielding quest to uncover the identity of this elusive perpetrator. Theodore Kaczynski, born in 1942, embarked on a journey that traversed the realms of academia and darkness, ultimately earning him the infamous moniker of the Yuna Bomber. His early years bore little foreshadowing of the tumultuous path he would eventually tread. With a brilliant mind and a penchant for mathematics, Kaczynski's academic prowess propelled him to the heights of scholarly achievement, culminating in a coveted doctorate from the esteemed University of Michigan. His intellect and expertise garnered him positions of influence teaching at revered institutions like the University of California, Berkeley. Yet beneath the veneer of scholarly success lay the tumultuous currents of inner turmoil and discontent. Kaczynski's inner demons, nurtured by grievances and disillusionment, gradually simmered to the surface, manifesting in a series of violent outbursts that would shake the very foundations of society. His journey from academic prodigy to infamous domestic terrorist serves as a chilling reminder of the complex interplay between brilliance and darkness within the human psyche. The genesis of Kaczynski's transformation into a domestic terrorist unfolded against the backdrop of the late 1970s, a period marked by the burgeoning influence of technology and industrialization on society. Driven by a fervent conviction in his own ideological manifesto, titled Industrial Society and Its Future, Kaczynski embarked on a crusade against what he perceived as the erosion of human freedom and dignity, wrought by the relentless march of technological advancement. With each passing day, his disdain for the forces of modernization deepened, fueling a simmering anger that would soon erupt into acts of violence. Armed with a twisted sense of righteousness, Kaczynski meticulously selected his targets, singling out individuals whom he deemed complicit in perpetuating the technological revolution. Among his chosen adversaries were scientists, engineers, and executives of technology-related companies, symbols of a system that he believed subjugated humanity to the whims of progress at the expense of individual autonomy. In his quest to dismantle the machinery of modernity, Kaczynski unleashed a reign of terror that reverberated across the nation, leaving a trail of destruction and despair in its wake. Throughout a span of 17 harrowing years, the Yuna bomber orchestrated a chilling symphony of destruction, meticulously crafting a campaign of terror that sent shockwaves reverberating across the American landscape. With each meticulously planned bombing, he injected a potent dose of fear into the collective consciousness of a nation gripped by uncertainty. His targets seemingly plucked from the annals of randomness bore the hallmark of a mind consumed by calculated malice. Packages laden with explosive devices found their way into the corridors of academia, the cabins of airplanes, and the sanctuaries of those at the forefront of technological progress. No corner of American society seemed immune to the Una Bomber's wrath, as he cast a wide net of terror that spared neither the lofty halls of academia nor the bustling thoroughfares of commerce. With each detonation, the Una Bomber etched his name deeper into the annals of infamy, leaving behind a trail of devastation and despair that would haunt the nation for years to come. The Una Bomber's nefarious tactics served as a striking demonstration of his cunning and meticulous planning, rendering his bombs as deadly as they were elusive. Employing homemade components meticulously assembled in secrecy, he crafted devices that confounded law enforcement efforts, leaving behind scant traces and frustrating investigative endeavors. 
With each detonation, the Yuna bomber flaunted his prowess, emboldened by the knowledge that his handiwork struck fear into the very heart of the nation. Yet his audacity did not end there. In a brazen display of defiance, he unleashed a barrage of cryptic messages and letters to media outlets, serving as both a boastful declaration of his deeds and a scathing indictment of the societal ills he perceived. Through these missives, he sought not only to revel in Tiraiti, but also to propagate his warped ideology, casting himself as a self-appointed harbinger of truth, amidst a world he deemed irreparably corrupted by the march of progress. Despite the Una bomber's cunning and relentless pursuit of his violent agenda, his reign of terror met its demise through the unwavering determination of law enforcement agencies, notably the Federal Bureau of Investigation, FBI. After years of tireless investigation and relentless pursuit, the long arm of justice finally caught up with Theodore Kaczynski in 1996. Nestled within the remote wilderness of Montana, his secluded cabin became the final refuge for a man who had eluded capture for far too long. The apprehension of Kaczynski marked the culmination of one of the most extensive and intensive manhunts in the annals of American law enforcement history. With his capture, a sense of closure descended upon a nation that had long been held captive by fear and uncertainty, underscoring the indomitable spirit of perseverance and dedication exhibited by those who tirelessly pursued justice. The FBI's breakthrough in identifying the Yuna bomber came through the meticulous analysis of evidence collected over years of investigation. Key components of the case included the forensic examination of bomb fragments, linguistic analysis of the UNA bomber's manifesto, and the collaboration between various law enforcement agencies. Crucially, the publication of the UNA bomber's manifesto in major newspapers at the FBI's urging led to a tip-off from his brother, David Kaczynski, who recognized similarities between the manifesto's content and his brother Theodore's writings. This pivotal lead ultimately led to the arrest and subsequent conviction of Theodore Kaczynski in 1996. The capture of the Yuna bomber reverberated across the nation, casting a stark light on the perilous landscape shaped by individuals consumed by extremist ideologies. As Theodore Kaczynski was brought to justice, the nation grappled with the sobering realization of the profound dangers posed by those driven to extremes by their own distorted beliefs. In the aftermath of his arrest, Kaczynski transformed into a hunting symbol, emblematic of the shadows lurking within the human psyche. His saga serves as a poignant cautionary tale, underscoring the corrosive effects of unchecked anger and festering resentment. Through his actions, Kaczynski etched a somber reminder of the catastrophic consequences that can unfold when grievances morph into acts of violence. His legacy stands as a testament to the enduring struggle against the darkness that resides within us all, urging society to confront the demons that lurk in the shadows, before they unleash untold havoc upon the world. In June 1996, a federal grand jury handed down an indictment against Theodore Kaczynski, charging him with 10 counts related to the illegal transportation, mailing, and use of bombs. Kaczynski's legal defense team, led by Montana federal public defenders Michael Donahoe and Judy Clark, initially pursued an insanity defense strategy in an attempt to avoid the death penalty. However, Kaczynski himself rejected this approach. Instead, on January 8, 1998, he sought to dismiss his lawyers and enlist the services of Tony Serra as his counsel. Serra agreed not to pursue an insanity defense but rather to build Kaczynski's defense around his vehement anti-technology beliefs. Despite Kaczynski's efforts, this request was unsuccessful. The following day on January 9, Kaczynski attempted to take his own life. The psychiatrist tasked with evaluating Kaczynski, Sally Johnson, diagnosed him with paranoid schizophrenia, a conclusion that has faced criticism regarding its validity. Forensic psychiatrist Park Dutz countered this diagnosis, suggesting that Kaczynski suffered from a Skinsky suffered from a schizoid personality disorder instead. In his 2010 book, Technological Slavery, Kaczynski himself refuted the diagnosis of paranoid schizophrenia, asserting that two prison psychologists who had interacted with him extensively over four years found no evidence to support such a diagnosis. He dismissed it as ridiculous and labeled it a political diagnosis. 
Some contemporary commentators have speculated that Kaczynski's family members, particularly his brother and mother, deliberately propagated the narrative of his mental illness in an effort to spare him from facing the death penalty. On January 21, 1998, Kaczynski was declared competent to stand trial by federal prison psychiatrist Johnson, despite the psychiatric diagnosis, and prosecutors sought the death penalty. Kaczynski pled guilty to all charges on January 22, 1998, accepting life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. He later tried to withdraw this plea, claiming the judge had coerced him, but Judge Garland Ellis Burrell Jr. denied his request, and the United States Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit upheld that denial. In today's world, the Una bomber's lasting impact serves as a stark reminder of society's fragility when confronted with unbridled extremism. While his reign of terror has ceased, the scars he inflicted endure as a sobering reminder of the persistent threat posed by those resorting to violence in the name of their beliefs. As the nation grapples with the specter of domestic terrorism in the 21st century, the Una bomber's story serves as a chilling warning of the dangers lurking within our midst. At 12.23 a.m. On June 10, 2023, Kaczynski was found in his cell unresponsive. He was taken to a hospital where he was pronounced dead. The Federal Bureau of Prisons did not specify a cause, but three people familiar with the situation said he died by suicide. He was also in the late stages of cancer. I would like to thank you for watching the video to the end. To encourage us to make more videos, please like, subscribe, comment, as well as share. Check out this other video if you haven't already.